Can it make it worse? Yes, when it is mismanaged and not properly explained to a patient or misunderstood by a patient or user error on the patient's end. Should it make it worse? No. PSA in and of itself is not indicative of BPH. PSA is extremely transient. If you understand the things that drive PSA, you wouldn't be as concerned and as obsessed with it, especially when you take a snapshot in time, which is essentially what a blood draw lab is. Uh, however, BPH in and of itself is something that will occur in every male if we live long enough to experience it. A 90-year-old will always have a larger prostate than a 19-year-old, and there's nothing anyone can do about that. However, people always blame testosterone. Why? Because around the age where men start to experience some levels of BPH, and around the age where men initially start testing PSA, which is according to the American Urological Association, is at the age of 40 and up, that is usually also when men go on testosterone. So the correlation of the timeline for when people start to look at something, coupled with when they start testosterone, happens to line up. So testosterone always takes the blame. Okay, if I brush dust under my rug for 10 years, and I never look under the rug, I don't know that there's dust there. It's presumed, but it is not evidence. If I happen to have my doorbell ring 10 years from now, and as the doorbell rings, I lift up my rug and I see all the dust from all the years, can I now safely say that when the doorbell rings, it causes dust to accumulate? Because they happen to be around the same time. The answer is no. Unfortunately, men start testosterone around the time when they start regular urology visits for their prostate, and that correlation is made. There is no evidence whatsoever, and Morgan Toller out of Harvard has done tons of research and published a lot of literature on this. I attended a seminar earlier this year, uh, specifically on prostate cancer and testosterone therapy. And it was three days of him explaining and presenting the evidence of why there isn't any. Um, so again, it's been debunked, but it doesn't matter how many times we beat this dead horse, mm -hmm. just like with estradiol, people will continue to believe what they want to believe. They'll continue to go after the old science of their PCPs, their endos and the euros, and they'll just keep saying estrogen's bad for you and testosterone causes prostate cancer. And this is this is the exhausting part of what we do, unfortunately.